for this problem, we have the following circuit diagram. We are also told that the voltage, Vg, is 240 at an angle of 0 degrees. This is being measured in VRMS. First, we're asked to find the average and reactive power for the voltage source, V of G. This is our S of G. So if we look in the notes linked below the like button, in the section 10.5 power calculations near the beginning, um, part 3, we have the following formula right here. We are going to use this to solve our S. So our S of G is going to be this. And we have this plus minus here in front of our P plus J Q. Now the plus minus is based on passive sign convention. Remember, usually a source is supplying power, thus the current is in the direction of voltage rise. To have a positive, our current needs to be in the direction of voltage drop. Since we just have the power supply here, we can see that our voltage is going in this direction. This is the direction of voltage drop from positive to negative. Now the current is going in the direction of voltage rise, which is the opposite from the drop. So it's going this way. Since our current voltage are going in opposite directions, our answer is going to have a negative out front. So we're going to have to factor that in when we solve for this problem. Now we're going to start solving this. We notice for our P and for our Q, we need our IM and the angle of our I. Well, to solve this, we can combine all of our impedances together and then use Ohm's law to find the current since we have the voltage. Now, it's important to note that the questions, our P and our Q, is asking for us in terms of VM and IM. This is important because we are given our voltage in terms of VRMS. We can't solve for this in VRMS, so we need to convert this from VRMS to our VMAX. Fortunately, we do have a formula for this. The conversion formula is that our VRMS is equal to our VMAX divided by the square root of 2. This can be found in the notes linked below the like button. It's not very clear, but it is in there. So now we want to find our VMAX. We're going to rewrite this equation with plugging in our known values. We're going to have our 240 times the square root of 2 be equal to our VMAX. So we've now found our VMAX to be approximately 339.4. It's important to pay attention to the units in which it is given because that could totally mess up a problem if you're not careful. So now we're going to start this by solving for the impedances. Now for the right two impedances, uh, this 15 ohm resistor and this J20 ohm resistor, they are in series. So we can add them together and we will just have one parallel impedance right here. So we're going to add the inductor and our resistor. We are going to have 15 plus J times 20 here. This 15 plus J times 20 is in parallel with our negative J25 capacitor. So what we need to do is solve for this using the parallel impedances rule. So we are going to have one over our first impedance, so one over J negative 25 plus one over our next impedance, which is 15 plus j times 20. And this is all being raised to the negative first power. Now we are going to solve for this. We're going to get this as our new equation. Now I'm just going to factor the neg negative. We get this. We're going to get this as our answer. Now we need to convert both of these to the polar form so that we can divide both of them together. To convert to the polar form, we are going to use the following equation where we have our Vmax equal the square root of our real number squared plus our imaginary number squared, all under the same root, and that our angle is equal to the tangent of negative 1 with our i divided by our r. We're going to do this for the numerator and the denominator. And then once we do this, we are going to divide our Vmaxes, and then we are also going to subtract the denominator angle from the numerator angle. Before we divide and subtract anything, make sure that the angles are in the correct quadrants. And if we are to do that, we will get this as the answer. So this is our current impedance, not including this 12.5 ohms right here. Now to finalize and get our total impedance, we are going to add the 12.5 ohms. Well, this is currently in rectangular form. We have our 12.5 here, and we need to add it to this right here. So what we are going to do is convert this from polar to rectangular form so that we may add like terms. And to convert from polar to rectangular, we are going to take our number, have a parenthesis, times the cosine of our angle, plus j times the sine of our angle. And this again is how to convert 
from polar to rectangular. And if we do this, we are going to get that our total impedance is 50 minus J times 12.5. If we want to convert this to the polar form, which we would use these equations for, we would get 52 with an angle of negative 14 degrees. So this is our, again, total impedance. Now, our problem is not directly using total impedance. Remember, we're solving for this up here. We are asked for our I of M. Well, for our I max, what we can do, what we can do is take the voltage max and divide that by our impedance. And using Ohm's law, we will find our I max. I max is our voltage max, which we found, we converted to be 339.4 over our impedance. And our impedance here is 52 with an angle of negative 14 degrees. We just need to convert the top part to polar. This is going to be a zero degrees angle right here. And now we're just going to divide the numbers and we are going to subtract the denominator angle from the numerator angle. This will give us an I max of approximately 6.6 .6 and an angle of approximately 14. This is our I max and now we can solve for our S of G. Starting with our P, I'm going to say that P is equal to the V max, which we found to be 339.4. And this is being multiplied by our I, which is 6.6 .6, divided by a two times the cosine of our angle for the voltage. We know that the angle for our voltage, we can see right here is zero degrees. So we're going to have a zero minus the angle of our I of M. And the angle for our I of M, we found to be 14. So this is going to be our equation right here. It's color coded as well to the specific parts of the problem. Now we want to solve for our Q. Our Q is going to be equal to almost the same thing. And we can see that made apparent if we look at the formula. The only thing that we'll be changing is we are going to have a sine in here instead of a cosine. So if we do this, we're going to get that our Q is equal to negative 270. These are the two values. Now we're going to use this to find our S. Remember, we said that since our current and voltage are in the opposite direction, we are going to have a negative out front. So our S is going to be equal to a negative 1084 minus 270. And per the formula, we do have a J right here. So we are going to have a J in here. Now, if we distribute this negative sign in from front, we are going to get that our S of G is negative 1084 plus 270. And if we distribute this negative sign in, we are going to get that our S of G is equal to a negative 1084 plus 270. And this is measured in VAs. Part B is asking us, is the voltage source absorbing or delivering power? Well, our voltage source is the negative 1084. So since it's a negative, it's delivering. Is the voltage source absorbing or delivering magnetizing VARS? This is the imaginary number. Our imaginary number is positive. That means that it is being absorbed. So we will have absorbing for this answer. Now we are going to solve for part D. We want to find the average and reactive powers associated with each element in the circuit. We can look at the notes, links below the like button, and in section 10.3, the RMS value and power calculations, the title relates to what we're solving. We are solving power and we have RMS value. That's why we're in this section. The formula that we will be using is the following. This is how we will find our P average and our Q reactants. We can replace both of these and we'll see how we're about to do that in a second. To start this, we need to actually solve for some things. First, we're gonna deal with the P at the 12.5 ohm resistor. So if we look back at the problem, we want the power here. Well, we have the resistance here and we know we can find current through the node voltage method so we're probably going to be using this second formula. So we need to set up a node voltage method. The node voltage method, we are going to have a plus minus like this. This is going to be our V1. And we can see that this blue line that I drew from earlier is in parallel with this. And voltages in parallel are the same throughout. So we're gonna have a plus minus here and then a V1 also. And the voltage across these two are the same. Now we're gonna write out our equation. And in doing this, we are solving for the VRMS. This is important because we are not going to use this Vmax that we converted it to. We are going to use the original VRMS that we were given, so it's the 240. This will be our node voltage method equation. Now to solve for this, I'm going to pull all the V1s out, and I'm going to move the constant to the right side. 
this is what we're going to get for v1 if you have any questions about the process which is all of this and all of this as well you can leave them in the comments below but that is the flow of operations that i use to solve this problem so now that we have our v1 we can solve for the current flowing through this resistor to do this we are going to use the formula where we have the i of our 12.5 ohm resistor equal to our source voltage which in this case remember is 240 that's what's given to us minus the voltage on the other side which is 184 with an angle of negative 4.4 and this is all happening over the 12.5 ohm resistor to solve this we are going to have to convert this into the rectangular form and after we convert this from polar to rectangular form you're going to get a negative 183.5 and if we convert this from the polar to rectangular form we're going to have a negative 184 plus j times 14. Now we're going to combine like terms and then divide. We're going to get this as a rectangular form. Now we need to convert it back to our polar form because remember we need the i RMS value, which is kind of the equivalent to the i max value. So we do need to convert this from rectangular to polar. And the conversion for this is going to be 4.64 with an angle of 14.1. Well, for the formula that we are looking at, which is this P average, all we need is the I RMS value, which is basically the I max value um, for this specific form, because we know it as I max and our angle. So we are going to have for the part D first one, 4.64, remember that is the I RMS that we just found, squared times the resistance. And the resistance here is 12.5. This will give us the power average for the first part of part D. And if we do this, we're going to get approximately 276 for our answer. And if we solve for this, we're going to get approximately 269. This is almost 276. Um, there is a little bit of error here, but that's just due to rounding. So you can get 276 or 269. Nice. Either or works. Now we are going to solve for the Q for our negative J 25 ohm resistor. And this is actually a capacitor, sorry, not a resistor, negative J25 ohms. And so we want to find the reactance over this. Now to find reactance, we're going to use one of these formulas. However, instead of being P, it's going to be a Q out front. So for this one, we will have a Q is equal to. Now we're going to look at this impedance. For this impedance, we have the negative J25 ohms, and we also have the voltage. So we should use this formula because we don't have current currently. Our voltage is going to be squared. That is our V1. We found our V1 to be 184. So we are going to have 184 squared. And this is, and this is being divided by our R. Remember, we are finding reactance, not impedance. And reactance is the same thing as impedance, except instead of it being Z of C, it's going to be X of C. And the X does not have the imaginary part in it. So it's just going to be a negative 25 in the denominator. And if we do this, we are going to get approximately negative 1354. That is the answer for Q negative J 25 ohms. Next, we want to find the power of our 15 ohm resistor. Well, for our 15 ohm resistor, we have resistance. So we know that obviously we have to use one of these two formulas. However, we don't have the actual power or current going through it. We can look at this, and this is the right side. Um, remember, we put our 15 ohm resistor and the J20 ohm impedance both in the same line. So if they're both in the same line, that means they're in series. And a current flowing through series is the same throughout. This means that we'll have the same current for our 15 ohm resistor as in our J20 ohm impedance as in our 15 plus J20. So we have this 15 plus J20. This is the impedance for both of these combined. We also have the voltage for both of these combined. It's our V1. Remember, since V voltage is, is in parallel, it's the same throughout. So to find the current, we are going to have the V1 over our resistance. This is Ohm's law. I'm going to do this right here in green. We're finding our I RMS. Our I is going to be equal to the voltage, which we found as V1 to be 184 divided by the resistance and the resistance is going to be the 15 plus J20. Well, we can't divide two rectangular forms, so we're going to have to convert our 15 plus J20 into the polar form. We're going to do this with this equation that we read out earlier here. 
Again, make sure that your angle is in the correct quadrant by graphing out the imaginary and real number. And if we do this, we will have this as our polar form. So we are going to divide our real numbers and then subtract the lower angle from the top angle. If we do this, we are gonna get 7.36 with an angle of negative 53 degrees. So this is our I. Now we want to find the power for it. So the power is gonna be our I squared this is the 7.36 part, so we're going to have 7.36 squared times our resistance. And the resistance here is 15. If we do this, we are going to get that the power flowing through here is approximately 813 watts. Now we're going to solve the Q for our J20 ohm resistor. Well, we do have the current flowing through here. We know that the current is the same throughout for series resistors, so we are going to use this. We are again going to use this formula because we again have the current and we have the resistance. So the current here is the 7.36 squared times the resistance and our resistance is J20. Since we're dealing with reactants, we're dropping the J and we're just going to be left with the 20 ohms. So this is our current equation. If we plug this into a calculator, we are gonna get for our answer 1,083 bars. And that is how you would go about solving for this problem. If you want more network analysis problems, there's a playlist. And if you want notes covering this entire material, they will be in the description below the like button. This is a pretty big problem. So like all other problems, if you have questions relating to this material or any other network analysis material, you can leave them in the comments below. The like button.